All right. To your church, most certainly very nice place, but there are nicer places in the world. 2009, I was on the invitation list for a dinner. French Embassy, Copenhagen, Golden Löwes Palais at Kongens Nüthoff. Guided tour by the ambassadrice. Very nice food. I will not talk about food, we will have a different talk on this topic this afternoon. I will talk about why I got invited at all to this dinner. There was a Danish-French event. The net will not forget. And I was one of the speakers. A discussion in Europe, at least for those five years since, there is a lot of information about us out there in the net, in the web. Uh, search engines, wonderful instruments. Uh, I could not live without them academically to dig out valuable information. So I went to Yahoo in this case, entered my name, that's what I saw. Nothing embarrassing, very good. No photos in drunken stupor. I went through this phase of my life before the age of selfies and smartphone. I must also have trained my students quite well so they don't uh, post photos about me in the web. There are some more things here. If I look over my right shoulder, who is he? Second row. <laughs> what does he do on my page? Is this prediction? Is this how I will look like in a few years? And we now could go on, and I might further down on this page find links to talks, presentations, papers I'm now no longer very proud about and uh, might like to forget about, and might want you to forget about them too. Is there something like a right to be forgotten? What intrigues me, first, what would such a right look like? Secondly, who gives it to me? Jump back. Start of my life in education, primary school. In my primary school class in Austria, there was a frame like that on the wall. First two lines of the Austrian Constitution of 1920, First Republic. The empire had perished. A republic was starting. What is a republic? The law originates from the people. I will come back to that at the end. I move on, skip gymnasium. I'm now at university in the 1970s. I'm sorry, we were quicker than even Hamburg, having a degree program in computer science at our university. And at that time, if you were on friendly terms with the operators, you were allowed to go into the rooms where you found machines like that. Cabinets types for secondary memory. These type of machines were being used increasingly, large companies, government departments, and they were replacing filing cabinets. Same size, containing paper. Back in 91, I was in Austria, Graz, where I was born, went to the relevant authorities to register. The guy went to the back room, came back with a sheet of paper saying, can it be that you've been here before? Your name appears to be on this uh, card. I can't read it. It was written in old German handwriting. Now with electronics computers, all of this processing much faster, much faster, fear that this would uh, allow automated processing of personal data, Government would know too much about us. Companies would know too much about us. Uh, Spiegel, the German magazine, late 1970s, early 1980s, ran articles on the man of class. We are totally visible. Uh, so then, um, legislation, privacy legislation. But if you've been in security long enough, you will discover people use it as an excuse to do something else. Like having tried berries. You're a French company, you're not uh, following our superb German privacy laws. 
You can't do business here, sorry. It has nothing to do with you being a foreign company. It simply is privacy, security. And all of this, back at that time, about collecting data. I have the travel application form from my university, name, address, bank details, everything being entered, collected. Moving on, 1980, something you do not know, Prestel. An interactive video tech system, why I've got it here, there was a case that bubbled its way up through the courts. Someone had found out the ID and password, one, two, three, four of somebody else, and uh, was able to access somebody else's Prestel page. He was taken to court for counterfeiting a password. And uh, the first court, the jury decided yes, this was, there was a case to answer, he was convicted, he appealed, uh, the Court of Appeals turned it down, uh, it went up to the House of Lords, the House of Lords said no, this is very unreasonable, the procrastinate effort to force these facts using somebody else's password. In the language of an act, counterfeiting things in the physical world. Try to drive difficulties for judge and jury, which we do not want to see repeated. They also went on, the law lords, to say, if you think this behavior is undesirable, create a new law. Now, important year, 95, there is a European directive on privacy and the language is almost identical to the OECD guidelines of 1980s. So this is 1970s, data collection. I had arrived at Royal Holloway, and that's why I would describe myself as an Anglo-Austrian um, development aid worker. Um, this is, um, again, um, over my shoulder, bottom row. That's me, that's the first year of the MSC in information security. In that year, 95, we had John Austin, the very policeman who had brought the case about Prestel to court, giving a course on computer crime, and he had Robert Schifrin, one of the accused, also coming to this lecture, and they discussed the case. Very interesting. 95 technology, what has the bird of fortune brought us? Private use of the internet, the internet for the unwashed masses. Graphical browsers to retrieve information. Search engines, Alta Vista, Yahoo in 95. Social networks, not yet Facebook, but uh, precursors. An important change. No longer collecting, pulling information, as we IT people would say. Information about me is pushed out in the network. And when I was looking for images of the push me pull you out of Dr. Doolittle's story, I didn't find anything better again than this Homer bird from Persepolis, head facing in two directions. When I'm talking about publishing, can publishing be undone? That brings me to my second court case. Someone in Spain, businessman in Spain, late 1990s, had debts, social security debts. Uh, the Department of Social Affairs had his property auctioned by force. That was advertised on request of the Department of Social Affairs in a Spanish newspaper. Later on, and I have to say, late 1990s newspapers would appear in print. No websites yet. Then the newspaper moved with the times. Electronic archive. If you went to Google, and I hear quite a few people from Google will be around here today, typed in that person's name, the advertisement of this auction would appear along the search results. In about 10 years later, he went back to first the newspaper and said, get rid of this entry, it's no longer relevant. And the newspaper said, sorry, the government asked us to publish this. This is true. He went to Google and said, uh, delete it from your research results. And Google said, sorry, 
this is the newspaper that carries this information, not us. If you want to sue us, by the way, we are incorporated in California. <laughs> Be our guest. Um, went to the Spanish Data Protection Authority and that said, uh, yes, Google must remove the link, but the newspaper is allowed to carry it because this was lawfully collected uh, and reflects the truth. Google appealed, it went to the European Court of Justice, and the European Court of Justice expressed its view. And this is my technical slide. European Court of Justice, you first have the Advocate General expressing an opinion, you later have the judges ruling. In most cases, they will agree. In this case, they did not. And that's appealing for the mathematician in me. Why a contradiction in logical conclusions? There were three questions before the court. Does European law apply to Google and both sides, or both, yes, both sides, he said, yes, they're having an advertising business in Spain, so they're doing business in Europe, so European law applies. Is Google a data controller? And the Advocate General let the Directive of 95, which is about collecting personal data, and said, no, Google is not collecting personal data. It's the newspaper. So you can't treat Google as a data collector. And is there a right to be forgotten? And the Advocate General read the directive, and the directive says you have a right to have data corrected that are incomplete or inaccurate. And again, the Advocate General said, this is not incomplete. It is not inaccurate. It's there by law. There is no right to be forgotten. And a few months later, the judges said, is Google a data controller? Yes, search pages contain personal data. The directive applies also to processing personal data, so we treat you as a data controller. Is there a right to be forgotten? Well, they said, in 95, all of this didn't exist yet. So when the directive was drawn, they could not look into the future. But we now have to apply their ideas and the European Charter of Human Rights. And we observe that for today, 10 years later, the information about this person is no longer really relevant. So, around this line of argument, they came to the conclusion there is a right to be forgotten. I read the ruling. Very interesting. It says, this is of course relative, has to be balanced against other fundamental rights. I think the law was taking out their checkbooks and uh, asking for considerable advances to explore these matters. The ruling says something in the line to me. Who decides on public interest? Is it Google? I was quite happy the day after I had prepared my lectures for a course here on this topic that was in the Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung, an article referring to a talk uh, Herr de Masier was going to give, uh, saying, we are complaining about giving too much power to search engines like Google, and now they become judges of what's in public interest. Is this what we want? How should we go ahead to deal with these issues? Going back to the ruling, um, other questions coming to mind. Why did the European judges proceed differently from the British judges back in 1990? Mathematical argument, the gap between the old counterfeiting laws for the physical world to misusing a password was much wider than the gap between a directive for pulling data and a problem with publishing paper could be a fair argument. Is it? And here the English part in me. 
the United Kingdom has a much longer tradition in parliamentary rule than the continent. Do the judges know their place better than ours and leave it to the legislator to legislate? Third, have we got tired of democracy? If you look at uh, turnout for European election, nothing to write home about. So, I was introduced as a university professor, so I have to leave you, leave you with some homework. That is the question. Who decides how your personal data may be used? Google, they're writing the code. The judges, my generation. You, the people. This was the world two and a half thousand years ago. The man giving the rules, he had taller than you. You were allowed to carry his umbrella and um, have a fly whisk to keep him happy. Is this the world? If not, and that's where your homework starts, engage in the political process so that the rules for your personal data are your rules and not somebody else's. Thank you very much.